السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته آه رمضان كريم and uh, I wish you happy ending of Ramadan as you have been enjoying the happy the happy beginning of Ramadan we are at the last 10 days of Ramadan which is the most sacred days of the year where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided us with the night of the power which if we stand and look for it in the last 10 days will be saved from hellfire no doubt inshallah ameen ameen for every and each one of you ameen for the people who are listening and the people who are watching and the people who are not listening and not watching because our dua and our prayer should not only be for our friends or for our relatives or for our neighbors our dua and prayer should be for everyone anyone everywhere and anywhere at any time and this is the essence of the message of islam of the prophet وسلم, who came to save humanity and his message was the everlasting message and it was the most conclusive message because it was guided by the book of allah which is a guidance for humanity forever and he was the teacher for humanity forever so when we make our prayer in Ramadan, we make it for everyone, or even outside Ramadan. Ramadan or outside Ramadan, we should pray for everyone. For every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the climate, for anything. Because we need the blessing of Allah, the blessing of Allah to be showered upon us. We are a very special ummah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he gave us Muhammad sallallahu alaihi who was Quran walking on earth. Kana khulqul Quran. His manner was Quranic. His behavior was Quranic. And Allah subhanahu wa taala confessed in his book that wa ma arsalnaka rahm illa rahmatan al We have sent you Muhammad to be a mercy for humanity. For everybody, for anybody, anytime, anywhere. Rahmat al alameen Rahmat al alameen Rahmat al alameen That's why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Prophet, was a very special, extremely special to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to link his name to the name of Allah in every adhan and every iqama, in every announcement, and every prayer. So how many billion times his name is mentioned day and night. Now we are in South Africa at Habast 8, in the UK at Habast 7, maybe in America it's Habast 3, maybe in Australia is about in the morning, early morning, the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in every corner of the universe at the vicinity of the creation of the galaxies of Allah is mentioned continuously every second, every minute, every hour because Allah wanted his name to be mentioned and he made his name to be connected to his name in the Adhan and the Iqamah this is Muhammad Wasallam. this is Muhammad Wasallam. this is Muhammad Wasallam. he's the only one in whom you make prayer on him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah will respond to you. In Allah wa malaikatu, you salloon ala nabi. Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallam. Allah and his angels are praying, making salat, salam on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All believers, pray on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So this is the special status of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another special status of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he was the Imam of all the Prophets in Jannah when he went in al Mi'raj to see all the Prophets from Adam to Jesus, peace be upon him, that we believe in all of them and we submit our mission to Allah, believing in Muhammad as a messenger and the Prophet of Allah SWT, and believing in all the messengers and the Prophet of Allah SWT, and he was the Imam. It's number two. Number three, he was giving 
the eternal book of wisdom and guidance for humanity which have the secrets and the essence of life and the life to come it talks about many things and not everything but and open the gates for uh, thinking and discovering and contemplating about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at yourself in the mirror and see the beauty of the touch of Allah on your heart and your body and how he created you and me so you give Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he guaranteed that his book Al-Quran nobody will be able ever will be will, no one will be able to change a word of the Quran in we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala نَحْنُ revealed a dhikr al-Quran وَإِنَّ Allah لَهُ protecting its existence no one will be able to change it no matter what they say about it no matter what they make different explanation and wrong explanation and dubious explanation but Allah will preserve it you know where? in the hearts of the believers in the hearts of the believers in the hearts of the believers so you will have the Prophet وسلم, we have Ramadan which is a whole month of forgiveness where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chained the mighty devils in this month and he did not want them to distract you in this month this is how Allah loves each and every one of you each and every one of us he loves us he loves us he loves us let us love him or let us pray to Allah oh Allah let me to love you as much as you love me oh Allah let me to be merciful to people as much you are merciful to me oh Allah be kind let me to be kind to people as much as you can to me who can't because the kindness the mercy the compassion the caring of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us is beyond imagination you cannot use calculator you cannot use any system to calculate his love his care and his compassion to all of us no matter what we say but what we need to say is oh Allah give me a part of your wisdom a part of your love, a part of your caring, a part of your consideration to me, a part of your forgiveness. This is it. So the love of Allah is translated in giving us the holy month of Ramadan, in giving us Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the teacher of humanity forever, in giving us the holy book of Quran, the guidance for humanity and the book for eternity forever 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 see how much you are blessed in this month of Ramadan see how much you are blessed in this month of Ramadan and that every month and every day and every week and every minute and every second whenever you say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with all these blessings, we have a duty to carry. We have a message to spread. Our duty is to stand up for the righthood for the men and women and creation of Allah SWT. To stand up for justice. To stand up for fairness. To stand up for, to stand up for consideration and looking after other people. And to be people's men and women through our love to the teacher of humanity and our submission to the creator of humanity subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our duty is a never ending story it's a never ending story it's a never ending story it's given to us by the man who refused to become a king a lord or become a prince or become a wealthy man and when the Qurashayit were trying to pressurize him in Mecca 
to try to tell him we'll give you wealth, we'll give you, we'll give you, we'll give you. He told his uncle, oh my uncle, oh my uncle, wallahi, if they put the sun on my right hand and the moon in my left hand, but look at his hands, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here is the sun and here is the moon. To let me leave the religion of Allah, I will never ever do that. Tell one of two things will happen. Either I die before you spreading the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or I will manage with your support Allah to spread the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was a challenge and he accepted it and he won and he is still winning. He started as one man with one woman, with one child, and with another man. And today, where are we now? 1.7 or 1.6 billion, 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 in spite of the fact, all what have been said about him, all what have been said about Islam, or about Caesar, and Muslims as terrorists and radicals and extremists, and, 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 the more they attack Islam, the more people read about Islam. Because Islam is the deen of logic, the deen of lo reasoning, the deen of guidance, the deen of sharing and caring. No matter what they say and talk about yourself. September 11 came, attracted a lot of people. Salman Rushdie and Satanic Verses came, attracted a lot of people. Islamophobia is coming, attracted a lot of people. They call us extremists, terrorists, and people read, people read, people read. Even you saw this young Italian, it was a hostage taken by people, terrorist organization in, uh, in Somalia. I was seeing, watching the video and she came back. You know why she came back? She came back as a Muslim. Why? I don't know. You ask her. You ask her. She read about Quran. She read about Islam while in captivity. And she became a Muslim. And she was in full hijab when she came back to Italy a few days ago or a week ago. So don't ever try to twist the arm of Islam. Because the arm of Islam is untwistable. Nobody can twist it. It's flexible. It accommodates. It guides. It teaches. It cares. It saves. And it empowers. The arm of Islam created many civilization. For wherever we lived in the past, we created civilization through the local community. This is our duty. Whether it was in Syria, nowadays, in Sham, in Iraq, in Egypt, in Turkey, in Andalusia, in Anadolia, all this. And all this great civilization happened. I was reading something about the uh, uh, renaissance of Andalusia and the civilization of Andalusia. The queen, when the fall down of Andalusia came, when actually Andalusia fall down, or what, what do you call it? You know, Isabella, the queen, the highly civilized, liberal, democratic, what did she do? To the books of science, technology, and knowledge, she burned all of them. What a kind of hatred to humanity. What a kind of ignorance of science and technology that those people used to have. Some of the new scientists, you know what they said? They burned more than one million books. Exactly like the Mughal and the Tatar in Baghdad. They throw all the books of knowledge in Tigray River and the Neofret River. Ignorance, hatred, ignorance, hatred and stupidity. With whatever left from the books of knowledge in Andalusia, about 30,000 books out of million and a half books being burned. This was the cornerstone of building the current civilization in the West. 
No, from only 30,000 out of 1 million textbooks. Science, astronomy, medicine, geography, agriculture, water, engineering, uh, everything. Music, arts, philosophy, literacy, everything, everything, everything. The scientists now in Europe, in Europe they are regretting this process of uh, mad burning of the knowledge of society. And said, if we have this million book with us now in Europe, in the whole world, we could have been building our houses, our villas, our, our uh, life in the galaxies. In the galaxies. Because civilization and renaissance and development and achievement is a chain, a process, a processing process of change, of chains of development, of achieving, of discovering, and of learning and teaching and yielding the knowledge to serve humanity not yielding the knowledge to destroy humanity, as we can see nowadays. Those people creating conflicts here and there to try to produce more weapons. This is what, what happened when Muslims build Renaissance and build civilization. Nowadays, this is our duty to bring it back, not to Muslims only, to everyone, anyone, everywhere, and anyone. Don't distinguish. Don't distinguish, don't differentiate between Muslims and Muslims when it comes to helping, saving, caring, sharing. They fed out of love. The miskin, the orphan, and the prisoner of war. The needy, the orphan. Allah SWT did not say whether the, they are Muslims or not. You see? See the multi-diverse, the multi-dimensional, the multi-dimensional teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the ulama to the knowledge of the Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were the foundation of Renaissance, which saved humanity for centuries, guided humanity for centuries, and will save humanity, inshallah, for centuries by yourself. This is Ramadan. Our duty is to serve, save, and bend our back to help everybody and anybody. Our message also it's not only to be delivered by a prophet or a messenger. It has to be delivered by each and every one of us, male and female, black and white, short and tall. The message of peace. Salam. Afshu salam. Wat'imu ta'am. Waqumu bil-layl. Wal-nas an-yam. Spread peace. Feed the people. Stand up at night while people are sleeping to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تدخل الجنة بسلام. So by doing this, you will enter heaven peacefully to the highest level in al-firdaus al-a'la. أفشوا السلام وأطعموا الطعام وقوموا بالليل والناس اليوم تدخل الجنة بسلام. Also, Prophet Sallallahu connected the poor to the first, the poverty to the first people to go to heaven. The poor people will enter heaven 500 years before the rich one. So I'm telling the rich one, rich people, be careful. Be careful with what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala given you. We have 820 million hungry folks in the whole world, 820, 21 or 22. 
every second an individual dies out of hunger every five seconds a child dies out of hunger every year about 36 or 33 million people die out of hunger six of them are children six million and you have plenty of food to be wasted plenty of drink and clean water to be wasted plenty of resources to be wasted plenty of waste to be wasted and polluting the climate and let us, let us to be scared of an unseen soldier of him subhanahu wa ta'ala unseen miserable you cannot wait it and you cannot see it but it kills to let the seven or nearly eight billion people to be looked down in their houses scared of death from a little germ or a little miserable soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the only one will know the soldier of Allah is Allah people nowadays standing up to say who is Allah where is Allah what's Allah all these sort of things all this what's the sort of thing Allah is patience Allah is kind Allah give the zalimin the oppressors the tyrants chance once twice five times ten times they might go back because Allah is not a punisher. Allah is the mercy and the merciful and the kind and compassionate. He does not want people to go to hell hellfire. He wants everybody to go to heaven. But when they refuse and they insist to refuse and fight the status of Allah, he will treat them like pharaohs, like Nimrud, and his people and what happened to them. Amen of Ra'aun on Namrud. Ila akhiri, ila akhiri, ila akhiri. See? Sometimes we run out of patience. When we see what's happening in Yigor in China. When you see what's happening in Kashmir in India. When you see what's happening in Arakan Burma for Rohingya people. When you see what's happening in Yemen to the innocent Yemeni people, the people, when you see what's happening in Syria with the barrel bombs descending from hell on the innocent people, when you see what's happening to the people in different parts of the world being tortured, killed, became destitute, became displaced, became, 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 and we tell Allah SWT, oh Allah, we cannot take it anymore. It's too much. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy to see the killing. It's heavy to see the zulm. It's heavy to see all this atrocity and tyranny. This lies, lies, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. But Allah yumhil wala yumhil. Allah delayed things to give people a chance to go back to him but does not ignore or forget. Never. And the Quran, which you are seeing nowadays, is one of the soldiers of Allah. For the last, at least myself, for the last nearly two and a half or three months, I am locked down in my house. When I go out, I go with hijab or I go with niqab. I was just joking with one of my friends Telling them, will niqab become the fashion of the 21st century to protect us from Corona or the sisters of Corona or the brothers of Corona or the mutilated genes of Corona and, 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 and. Some of the benefits of Corona is closing now all the red areas. Because we cannot trust who is there? Also, the, the, what do you call it? The, the area of the devils. 
were in certain corners. People are scared to have this, this, uh, يعني, a bad relationship between a man and a woman, or between a woman and a woman, between a man and a man. We went so far in turning our back to Allah and telling him, okay, <laughs> we don't need you. Astaghfirullah azim. Allah will tell you, okay, Corona, go. Corona comes. And now people are talking about wait a year or two years, nobody knows. Because no treatment and no vaccine has been developed. And we take it ourselves as a sign, as a sign of mercy. Because this will tell us, go back. Go back, especially in this month of Ramadan and in any other month, to the Lord of everything, to the Creator of everything, to the first and last, to the Alim and the Alim and the Alam al Ghuyub, to the Mighty, to the Powerful, to the Able, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does Allah need us? No. At all. Does Allah deprive any non-believer from his kingdom? No. Does Allah deprive me, if I am a kafir, from breathing, from having my food to be digested in my stomach, from my blood running in my body, from my head and my brain thinking, from me achieving, even while I'm achieving, I'm fighting and cursing him. It doesn't. It doesn't. And this is the wisdom. He fairly treats everybody in this life. And does not deprive his enemies and the tyrant who create the tyrannies from living in this life. But when they go to him, he will put, subhanahu wa ta'ala, their acts and deeds on scale, very, very scale, more sensitive than the scale, the micro, the, the electronic scales of nowadays. And we'll let each one of us to see his video, lifelong video, in the dark, what I used to do, what you people used to do, and in public, what we used to do. Nothing left, even the whispers. Even the thinking, even the intention, huh? which at my heart. So when he makes the judgment, he made it, he makes it fair. But in dunya, he never, ever, ever, ever deprived the people who fight Muslims and kill Muslims from the right to live comfortably where in his kingdom eating his risk drinking his risk wearing his risk spending his risk huh? all this living in his risk which is the planet or the houses and all this so driving his risk which are the cars see this is the difference from a man made God and Lord and the Lord of the Lord and the creator of all the creation. If I was claimed, claimed uh, I, I claim to be a God, I will be driven by my desire. If I am the God, I'll be controlled by advices, wrong or right, of some people. But the knowledgeable, the creator, and the guide, and the wisdom is from him, who knows everything, everything, even the little world inside the big stone that nobody can see it, he provides her with risk, with risk, with risk. This is how we are privileged, very much privileged to follow the teaching of the teacher of humanity and the Lord of humanity and the creator of humanity, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our message is spread peace. 
Then our mission, don't stop, no matter what they talk about you, no matter how they treat you, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, never stop. The more they block your way to guide people, the more you become a resilience to help everybody and anybody. I mean it, everybody and anybody. Everybody and anybody. Don't stop helping. Don't stop reaching. Don't stop delivering the act of goodness to anyone. Don't ever ask about their religion, their culture, their language. A human being is a human being. An animal has to be respected as well. A bird. A woman locked in. A cat. Neither she fed her, nor she provided her with some drink. She went to hellfire, Ra'ezubillah. A prostitute from the Israelites, when she was passing by a panting dog, she took her food, shoes off and went to the well and brought some water for her. Allah forgave her for this noble act. Teacher who teaches humanity, like a lot of teachers amongst you, is following the teaching of the prophets of God. Because prophets were teachers, messengers were teachers, and teachers are taking a part of the prophetical message of the messengers and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this. Who will talk about Corona? The white army. More impressive than the military one. The nurses, the auxiliary, the sisters, the staff nurses. The cleaners in the hospital who are dying every day, everywhere in the hospital, serving and serving you and me when I am suffering from Corona. And you, a new, a new heavenly profession that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in their hearts the mercy and the kindness, whether those people are Muslims or non Muslims, they stand with open heart to see and meet the unseen enemy which you call the coronavirus. Many of them are dead nowadays. So what we need from you, brothers, is to keep sharing, sharing, sharing what you have. Don't stop sharing. Don't stop helping. Don't stop uh, guiding. Don't stop educating and teaching and advising and in the month of Ramadan it is the month of charity as well Prophet ﷺ was the most generous and he, he was extremely generous in his life but most generous in Ramadan most generous in Ramadan please give give, give all the mosques all the charities all the community centers all the small organizations everybody Please build bridges. Build bridges between you and others, whether the others will be Muslims or non-Muslims. In our country, South Africa, in our country, everywhere. South Africa, for me, is a very dear country. I love it. And I hope that you can love my South Africa like I love it. I don't have the passport, but I have the heart of South Africa here. Can you see it? I'm carrying it. I love all of you. But I love you to stand up, shining from the south. And the sun of the south should be shining the whole north, and the whole east, and the whole west. I was very impressed by you when I met young, talented, zealous, dedicated, committed, energetic, motivated, empowered South African young men and women, I wish I was living with you. Because life with you is a life that I would like to do. Life with you is a life as well I would love to do or to live. So, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He given us. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His privilege. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his wisdom to us 
and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what he prevented us from having in spite of the fact that it was our desire to have it because we don't know his knowledge keep thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all having all this all these blessings from him you see I'll conclude by talking about you in South Africa or in the West or in the North or in the East or in the South whatever it is once upon a time a wise man called Muhammad his people used to call him a magician a poet okay but he was a wise man he did not talk out of his nonsense he was guided by the guidance of the wahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this wise young man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was sitting in the shade of Kaaba and he was looking at the skies and the moon and the stars and imagining visualizing whom he will meet and whom he'd like to see he was talking about you each and every one of you in this flat or in this house or in this villa or in this mansion on the street or in the car listening he said to his companions انني في شوق لاحبابي اشتاق شوق الحبيب لمحبوبي the desire of the beloved one to the people that he loves desire here you know when you put your hand or your heart and you feel this uh, satisfaction this tranquility the companion told them aren't to be your beloved one said no it's not you it's you it's you it's you he was talking about you here and there in every township in every street in every corner it's you he loved he was talking about you the, and he told them the act of each one of you is equivalent to the act of each 50 of you you know who are the 50 sahaba you know why because he knew from his wisdom and the guided knowledge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will be suffering and tortured badly by the surrounding philosophical climate as he said in one hadith the time will come upon you that the one who is trying to stick himself or herself to the religion will be like the one will be holding in his hand or her hand a burning fire. But he will take it because he wants to receive the deen. And he will, in another hadith said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, تتكالب تتكالب عليكم الأمم كما تتكالب الأكرد على قصادة. The the different أمم different nations will run on you like the hungry men men and women running to the big 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 meal and big dish. And the companion of the Prophet told him, "Is it because we are few?" He said, "No, not few. You are plenty. One point seven billion." But they will become like the, this frothy, creamy layer on the wave in the sea and in the ocean. Which the wave will take it this way. They will have no shape, no weight, no test. And Allah will take off the fear of your enemy from you. And you will throw in your heart something good one. They told him, what is الوحن? The Prophet Muhammad said, حب الدنيا وكرهية المال. The last point to discuss is love of dunya and fear of death. 
because we have the one in our hearts we became what we are nowadays but if we have the iman in our hearts in Ramadan and during Ramadan we'll never become like what we are and have it, what, what, what we are seeing today so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and I conclude by saying to each one of you the one who lives for himself or herself only lives there or live their timely life but the ones who live for others live forever may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you amongst those people who live for others so they can live forever and they can serve everybody I love you South Africa I love you anywhere and everywhere wherever you are huh and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and thank you Islamic Youth South Africa for allowing me to communicate and talk with you and your people in South Africa in Johannesburg in Durban in Cape Town and in everywhere I love you Africa and I love you South Africa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh